Que lo que es mi gente, this is your brother David Rodriguez with another episode of Hispaniola History Channel. And for this episode, we're focusing on Hernando, Hernando de Soto, the Santiago Knight. We want to give some proper credit where credit is due. We want to focus and share some information on Hernando de Soto, the swarthy Santiago Knight. Let's go. Well, they credit him for being the first European to enter North America. Before I read information about Hernan de Soto, I just want to make one thing clear. I notice when it comes to Spanish or even Portuguese contributions to early America, a lot of these things get generalized as European contributions. Uh, but let's be clear, even back in those times, Spain and Portugal was not even considered part of Europe. There were two different people, there were two different cultures. Europe, for a long time, and in about a three, four hundred year war with Spain, and they always considered themselves to be separate uh, from Spain, especially during this time period. So we have to be careful when we look at history and they generalize and summarize everything as being European, especially in a time when there was a clear difference between Spaniards and the rest of Europe. So let's put that into proper perspective. So let's get some information on Hernando de Soto. It says here he was a Spanish explorer and conquistador. So you notice they say Spanish explorer, not European explorer, right? Just wanna make that clear once again. So let's continue. The uh, Spanish explorer and conquistador who uh, was involved in expeditions in Nicaragua and the Yucatan Peninsula. He played an important role in Francisco Pizarro's conquest in the Inca Empire in Peru, but is best known for leading the first European expedition deep into the territory of modern day United States through Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and most likely Arkansas. He is the first European documented as having crossed the Mississippi River. And the source provided for that is the European Discovery of America, Southern Voyages uh, by Samuel Morrison, covering the years from 1492 to 1619, uh, Oxford University Press. And please keep in mind this created the foundation to the Spanish territories in North America. This land was to become Spanish territories, but the Portuguese let's not forget, were the first to map out the Americas and were running the ports. So whereas the Spanish were the general population, they were still the Portuguese that were running the ports, running the trades, had the ship routes. So that was the relationship early between the Portuguese and Spain during this American colonization period. Uh, many cities, towns, streets, and businesses are named after Hernando de Soto. Uh, here you have the city of De Soto. You got some street signs, some highway signs. Over here you got De Soto Memorial, uh, De Soto All American City, 2006. Uh, landmarks and things of that nature. Here's a places in the United States that bear the De Soto name: in Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Indiana, Texas, Louisiana, Florida, Mississippi, uh, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of land in North America named after Hernandez Soto. He, he's even honored in the White House. There is a big famous painting right next to the painting where we see Columbus arriving into Hispaniola. Right next to that painting, we have a painting of Hernando de Soto entering North America. Like I said earlier, these are Spanish expeditions, which has nothing to do with the rest of Europe. These are not Britons. These are not English people entering the Americas. These are a totally different sect of folk. But, you know, he is honored and remembered in the White House. And this is a painting here uh, by William H. Powell. It's an oil painting made in 1855, featured in the Capitol Rotunda. And it features a scene in which Hernando de Soto enters, is met by the Native Americans. So high praise towards Hernando de Soto may be due to the fact that he is one of the first on record to introduce cattle ranching to North America. 
DeSoto brought with him an abundance of livestock and horses, as well as Spanish, Portuguese, and mixed race Atlantic Creoles, settlers to help create the foundation to the new colonies in North America before the English arrived. This information is provided by James Davison West. Hernando de Soto's expedition laid the seeds for both the Spanish vaquero culture and the black cowboys that would dominate the Wild West centuries later. So this is a very high honor to give a Spaniard considering the long historical wars America had against Spain and the early Spanish settlers. Florida, Louisiana, and Texas, which still honors De Soto's name, was once part of the Spanish Empire in North America. After Spain was kicked out and Manifest Destiny was the order of the day, hate and propaganda against Spanish people came as the land was seized and redistributed. But when the United States took over the Spanish lands, the vast majority of the remaining residents did not look like this. They looked more like this. Were these residents here? I mean, were these the residents of the Spanish and Portuguese Atlantic Creoles that uh, Hernando took with him in the early 1500s? But there was a combination of a mixed, mixed folks here, and especially when we talk about the Seminoles who remain free throughout this whole period remaining free by uh, virtue of fighting back against that manifest destiny, uh, we see that they remain with their Spanish culture, Spanish surnames and Spanish garbs. Hardly any of them wore feathers. You know, you would think, okay, if these were Indians, they'll be wearing the traditional Indian headdress. As they, we can see, uh, yes, there are dark-skinned folks, but they also have some Asian features as well. So this will be consistent with who Hernando de Soto would have brought with him to North America. It was a combination of Native Americans and Spaniards. Hernando's skills as a horseman was admired and respected by the most elite Spanish nobles, who in America were best known historically for their cowboy skills. But as we can see, these are the people that stayed behind, and these are the folks who had most of that talent when it came to cattle ranching and horseman skills. There's an origin to all of this. And of course, when the United States took over much of this land, this is when the Spanish hate and land grab took place during the 18 and 1900s. You know, we talk about the quote unquote black people who were lynched during this time period, but let's not forget there was not hate towards Spanish and Mexicans. And this hate led to hangings. Let's not forget that. And most of these people were landowners, right? Vaqueros, cattle ranch people. Let's not forget that. So now back to Hernando's story. Many books were written about the first quote unquote European to set foot in North America, but are authors and illustrators being honest about De Soto's appearance and identity? Was Hernando De Soto really a light-skinned Spaniard as depicted in paintings and history books? According to historical records, he was a dark-skinned Spaniard, a Santiago Knight, skilled horseman, and rich enough to lend money to the Emperor of Spain? I'm at the Spanish Borderlands, a chronicle of old Florida and the Southwest by Hubert Eugene Bolton, Yale University Press. So I'm at chapter three, page 46. At the top of page 46, it says Hernando de Soto was about 36 years old, uh, 36 years of age when he appointed Adelantro of Florida. He was a gentleman by all four descents, and he recently been created by the emperor, a knight of the Order of Santiago. So let's be clear, that's very important. Let's read on. Now this is part where they start actually describing him, his character, how he looks like. His nature was to be read plainly in his swarthy, strong lined face and burning black eyes. Let's read that again. His nature was to be read plainly in his swarthy, strongly lined face and burning black eyes. He was renowned for his courage and his skill as a horseman. Was noted among those lovers of horses, the Spanish nobles. He was able to set up a fine establishment and to lend money to the Emperor Charles V. Let me repeat that. He was able to set up a fine establishment and to lend money to the Emperor Charles V, whom 
He was seeking high office. Who was this Hernando de Soto, swarthy Spaniard who's lending money to the king of Spain? And for those who still confuse on what swarthy is or what swarthy means, let's go to the Oxford definition of swarthy. Swarthy means dark skin. Here it goes, swarthy. Adjective, dark skinned. Here's some examples, similar, dark, dark colored, dark skin, dark complexion, dusky, tan. So when we're describing Hernando de Soto, he is a dark complexion man, according to the historical documents. This is one of the first images of Hernando de Soto. Sources, Florida's Centennial Library of Congress, 1791. One of the first images of Hernando de Soto. So how does this all relate to Hispaniola? Even before Hernando de Soto made his expedition to North America, Hispaniola, under the captaincy of Santo Domingo, already had a surplus of livestock and skilled horsemen. It was also the island the Santiago Knights first settled in, mainly on the north coast. So we know that first city, Santiago, uh, up on the north coast, then after La Vega, and then after that, Mocha. Some of these cities were established very early by the same people. Similar backgrounds. Spanish nobles of Portuguese lineage who knew how to operate a ranch, a cattle ranch, a farm. And remember the previous episodes, we already covered the Santiago Knights, the King of Portugal, the Sephardic Jews, and the seven cities founded by the Knights in the Americas. The true story of the dark-skinned Spaniards the Santiago Knights and the Portuguese early presence in the Americas is still not fully told. Is this a continuation of the old black legend against the real Spanish nobles and their descendants? Despite all this, modern day Americans cannot deny the contributions and sacrifices made by the early settlers of Spanish ancestry. And with that, this is the Santiago Knight, Hernando, giving him his proper due credit. And we want to correct the history in terms of who he was and how he looked like and how folks like him were settling really early in North America, centuries before the English had arrived. This is your brother, David Rodriguez, with another episode of Hispaniola History Channel. Good night and God bless. Peace.